Hey, welcome to Firebase Release Notes for January, where we cover big and small releases from Firebase. We have four topics today, so let's dig in right away. Starting off the year with big news, Remote Config is bringing custom signals from the server-side SDK to client SDKs. For those of us who aren't as familiar with server-side Remote Config, what exactly does this mean? Well, to make this clearer, I'll tell you a short tale. Let's say you're using Remote Config on an app that uses GPS and gyro data from snowboarding to create 3D modeled simulations of the run. For whatever reason, your project has no spare analytics audiences or user properties left to create Remote Config conditions from. How would you gate admission to A-B tests for different simulation models based on their choice of snowboarding stance? With the new version of the Remote Config SDKs for iOS, Android, and web, you can set this information as a custom signal. With that, you can let some fraction of those who board Goofy try out a model that assumes their phone was in their pants back pocket while recording. The documentation for this feature is hot off the presses, and if you're using iOS version 11.8.0 or higher, Android version 22.1.0 or higher, which is in Firebase Bill of Materials version 33.8.0 or higher, or web version 11.2.0 or higher, you should give it a look. Speaking of adding custom info to better understand your app, Crashlytics has added a new sort of custom keys to Android. Historically, calls to record exception would all show the final state of custom keys at the time of the final call. So if you recorded three non-fatal exceptions in a row using exception with calls to keys in between each, they would all display the final value of the keys no matter what the value of said keys was at the time of recording the exception. Not only did the community bring this issue to our attention, but subsequently another user later offered up a solution. That is, akin to the iOS version, Crashlytics for Android should provide the ability to create event-scoped custom keys. Based on these suggestions, the team has released an overload for a Crashlytics.record exception that includes event-scoped custom keys as parameters. Check out our docs to see how these event-specific custom keys can be used to record the point-in-time state of your app. Crashlytics, though, has more in store coming into the new year. Last month, Rosario told you about how AI assistance in Crashlytics now provided insights into crashes and ANRs. Well, this time the Crashlytics SDK for Unity gets to shine. Unity stack traces, including native code produced by Unity's C Sharp to C++ transpilation engine IL2 CPP, are now eligible for analysis by AI assistant. Crashes and ANRs will now provide a report that includes the summary slash cause, debugging options, actionable next steps, and best practices to address them. This along with the aforementioned event scope custom keys should prove themselves to be valuable instruments in the tool chest of devs, Unity and otherwise going forward. Last but not least, an update to Firestore. Firestore backups, which are consistent point in time copies of a database, have been available for a while now, but the ability to view the backup schedule has been limited to users with the datastore.backups.get and datastore.backups.list permissions. To simplify provisioning and make this more accessible, both permissions have been added to the default roles, roles slash firebase.develop viewer and roles slash firebase.viewer. Those were all the updates we had for today. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel below. My name is Joe and I'll see you on a future episode of Firebase Release Notes.